if you're anything like me, a boring cookie cutter home that looks just like every home in your town does not resonate with you or your personality. You want something unique, not just in appearance, but in the way that it functions. Something that feels like it was custom tailored for you and your family and how you live. But if all you see are generic designs and recycled style, how do you go about finding those unique qualities that will make your home one of a kind? I'll take you through my process of starting a project and the steps that I take to help my clients see what's possible when you leave boring behind. So the very first step is to start with your site and this will help with the organization of spaces on your property. So you wanna be looking at what are the unique environmental conditions of your site and every site is different, right? So is it a rocky site? Is it a wooded site? An urban site? A coastal site? Is it flat? Is it sloped? Are there any special characteristics that can be referenced in the design? What are the solar angles and what rooms do you want morning sun in versus afternoon sun in? What rooms do you want to avoid having any direct sunlight at all? Are there views? If so, in which direction and what rooms do you want to have those views in? Which direction are the prevailing winds? And is natural ventilation and cross breezes through your home important to you? Are you dealing with stronger winter winds versus summer winds, where maybe in the winter you wanna block those winds and in the summer you wanna allow those, those nice cool breezes to blow through? Are there any abstract qualities or moments on your site that can be used to add something unique to the design? The best projects have a mix of hard line analysis and abstract inspiration. Frank Lloyd Wright placed falling water on top of the waterfall that was the client's favorite place to spend time. Witten Architects in Maine elevated one of their homes to keep intact a path leading to the coastline that had been worn into the woods from generations of family members walking back and forth. I'm currently working on a house on a wooded lot that will retain most of the trees and weave the house around the trees based upon the client's love of bird watch. It's these unique moments that add to the special meaning of a place and that will make your home unique. Next is designing based upon how you live. I call this performance programming. Now programming is simply a quantitative list of spaces and their approximate sizes and maybe even an organizational chart of adjacencies. Performance programming, however, is qualitative. It's based on your habits and your routines. What is the first thing you do when you come home from work? What does your Saturday morning look like in the winter versus the summer? What side of the bed do you sleep on? Are you an organized person or are you a messy person? Now I have an extensive client questionnaire that goes deep into discovering all of the special aspects about how you live and I take those and I try to distill down to a few key moments. Now, just like the site, abstract qualitative influences are just important as the quantitative data. And when you have a mix of the two is when you're gonna get something unique. I have clients that worship their cats and we designed a special cat rooms and spaces through, throughout the house to allow the cats to have some unique fun moments, such as a custom design cat run that goes up to a cupola where the cats can perch themselves up high and look out over the property. I have another client who we designed the interior spaces to help alleviate seasonal depression. Another client of mine hosts 20 family members for dinner on a weekly basis. And we designed this sort of expandable kitchen that can be unfolded to accommodate that larger number of people and then retracted when it's just the immediate family. Now, if you take just these first two points, the unique qualities of your site and performance programming based upon how you live, you are already doing so much more than the average person who is just simply building a new home. But we can go further than that into the inspiration. Next would be inspiration from nature. What are some of the most pleasant experiences 
in nature that you relate to. Maybe it's the feeling of warm sand between your toes on a beach, or maybe the way that the light filters through a canopy of leaves in the forest, or maybe the aroma of a flower garden, or the awe of standing at the base of a mountain. These are all things that can be referenced and used to formulate specific moments in the design. Some examples are basing the form of a house from a rock outcropping that you like, or using a series of wood slats as screening devices to filter the daylight, or how the changing seasons will alter the appearance and the qualities of your home. Next, you can find inspiration from other architects. I am constantly looking for inspiration in the work of other architects, how they solve the problem that is different from how I would have solved a similar problem, how they use materials and layout in their spaces versus how I use materials and layout in my spaces. And if you're looking for something different, then you don't want to use your sort of cookie cutter builder grade houses or houses that you see on the TV shows as your design inspiration. You want to stay away from that. You want to stay away from whatever styles and trends you see on TV or in most magazines. Because if you follow those styles and trends, your house is going to end up looking just like everyone else's house. Now being based in Massachusetts, I generally like to look towards other architects in the Northeast for inspiration. A few of these include Birdseye in Vermont, or Bates Massey down in Long Island, Witten Architects up in Maine, or Hutka Architects on Cape Cod. But it's not just architects in the Northeast that I gain inspiration from. I like to look at architects from all over the world. And you know, some others might include the Ranch Mine out in Arizona, or Olson Kundig in Seattle, and many, many more. The point is, if you want to have a unique home, don't look at homes that are just like everyone else's. Next would be inspiration from building sciences. A code minimum house is the worst house that you are legally allowed to build. So why would you want your largest investment to be of the worst quality allowed? Many synthetic materials have toxic chemicals or off-gassing, or they'll live on forever in a landfill once you dispose of them. The use of natural materials and how those materials perform can be a big source of inspiration. Understanding how certain building forms can perform better in hot and cold environments is good to know as you're designing something unique. Understanding how materials and products get assembled in the correct way can lead to opportunities to express those qualities in the design. Next is the expression of structure and joinery and craft. I take a lot of inspiration from a home structure. Some people will say, oh, look, those are nice exposed beams. But if you do it correctly, that exposed framing can begin to tell a story about your home. I like to look at the works of master carpenters and furniture builders or wooden Japanese structures and their incredible joinery. Getting inspiration from these craftspeople can lead to having some unique moments in your home as well. This is just a short list of where you can find inspiration for a custom home. And there's many other places where I find inspiration for homes. One might be in evaluating the procession into the house, the approach to your home, and the process of entering into your home, both vehicular and pedestrian. How you can use landscape and how you can use the form of your home to give yourself some little glimpses of what, what's to come. Memory. Memory can play a key role in designing something unique. I have a distinct memory of the sound that the wooden porch door at my grandmother's house made when shutting. And you can use sound and color and texture to spark your memory of a certain time or place. Often when I'm speaking with my clients, I'll have them describe a time in their childhood that they remember being happy. And we can use that to sort of recreate that moment in their home. Another thing might be the use of shadow. Too many people design for full daylighting with large windows everywhere and lots of lights and lots of light fixtures flooding the, the room with even levels of, of light. 
but some of the real magic happens in the shadows where there is contrast, where there is shadow and darkness can enhance the qualities of a space. What are some of the places that you find design inspiration?